We know that being a geek isn't just a hobby, it's a lifestyle. Join us as we invite special guests to share their love for the characters and worlds that shape them. Are you ready? It's time to let your geek side show. We had the chance to sit down with actor Graham McTavish, known for his roles in Outlander, Preacher, and The Hobbit, and discuss his film work, his fandom, and his directorial debut, This Guest of Summer. Listen along. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Sideshow Live. We have with us actor and director Graham McTavish. Hello, Graham. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very excited to be You're here. Very this is this is um, you won't know what this place is like, but this is like <laughs> the best man cave in the world. It's just fantastic. Yes, we were. Well, that's what we're kind of going for at the moment. So you can see all the different. You saw all the different like archive and the different um, statues that we're working on, oh. and you haven't even gotten the full tour yet. No, I'm looking forward to that very much. Actually, <laughs> awesome. But we're here to talk about you. Yes, please so, talk about me. Yes, we we do like talking about you. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, first off, thank, thank you so, so, so much for being here. Oh, no, my so pleasure. we'd like to talk a little bit about like your career and where you come from. And we know that you're a huge geek, so we'd like to talk to you about that a little bit, too. Well, I mean, you know, in terms of geekdom, geekiness, geekiness. Uh, I'm medium. Definitely, I'm not like full geek because, you know, that's... I mean, I've I've seen full geek. And, uh, I, <laughs> I can only aspire to that level. You're comparing full geek to like Peter Jackson, and like well, no, that's, that's extreme geek. That's that's mega geek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that I'm. Uh, I've always been. You know, I've always been into comics. Well, I went through a period, especially when I was a kid, where I was hugely into all the comics and bought them, and I still have quite a lot of my Marvel. Comics, Spider-Man comics from the 1960s at home. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, And then uh, there was a huge gap, really, in my comic life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I rediscovered comics, mainly, actually, I have to say, through Preacher, which, by coincidence, I am now in. (laughs) <laughs> and that's really extraordinary. It's a very sort of uh, out-of-body experience, actually. So how does that feel to have been brought back into comics by a comic like Preacher and then to be able to portray a character in that? Oh, it's absolutely incredible. It's uh, like a dream come true, really. This, the Saint, the Saint of Killers, yes. is my... Well, along with Hair Star, mm-hmm. those are my two favorite characters from the comics that I just used to love. When you're reading a comic and uh-huh. you come to, and then you turn the page over and there's that character that you really love. Oh, yeah, this is going to be good. <laughs> and I always used to feel that with The Saint and with Hair Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, no disrespect to the other characters because they're all amazing. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so when I got the chance to play him, it was a bit overwhelming, to be honest. The first day on set, I did feel a huge sort of, not burden of responsibility, but a responsibility, mm-hmm. not just to myself as a fan, but to all the other fans of, of that comic and that character. So on the inside, the medium geek was just bursting out. And on the outside, I had to be this very contained, mm-hmm. silent killer. Mm-hmm. Just and uh, it was, yeah, it was really interesting. But putting on that outfit, oh my God. Just the best. And you told me a story before we went live a little bit. So oh. do, would you mind sharing that? Yeah, one no, I um, your... I arrived. There's a scene in season one where I arrive in a western town, and uh, if you grow up in the UK, um, you never imagine a that you'll be wearing a cowboy outfit, and b that you'll actually be riding a horse into an actual western town. And I did that, and. I had to be, it was on a long lens, and I had to be very calm, and you know, the horse, very, very reminiscent of that scene in High Plains Drifter when he arrives in the the town. And Uh of course I was a gigantic Clint Eastwood fan. And so (laughs) all of these images, all of these memories are going through my mind as I'm doing this, but I had to betray none of them. And all I wanted to do was just leap up and down in my saddle, shouting, look, mum, look, I'm a cowboy in a western town. And uh, I just had to look like this sort of stone cold killer. Yeah. Um, which was really hard. Yeah. Really hard. So I, um, I did have a little quiet moment mm-hmm. offset where I jumped up and down a little bit. And that scene, though, is so incredible when you watch the show, too. I so I, I love that now I'm going to have to go back and rewatch it. Oh, to, to knowing. The book, knowing that you were just inside going, I want to jump up and down. Oh, and, you know, walking into a saloon. Uh-huh. You know, I walk into a saloon with yeah. my guns and yeah. my bag of decapitated children's heads. 
awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, someone, someone had to do it. Yeah. And um, that was a great moment, too. Like, low angle, nice wide, me coming through the saloon bar do- doors. Man. It's certainly yeah, an iconic moment in yeah. my life. So. Yeah. Um, and this isn't the first time you've had to take a character that is an iconic character mm. from pop culture and turn it into something that people see on screen as well. Because mm. you've done you've done that actually several times, right? Uh, through books and even your voice acting career. You've I done guess it. yes, that's true. I, yeah. I hadn't really thought of it that way, to be honest. Uh, I guess you're right. Yeah, I mean, with The Hobbit, uh-huh. um, which is such a well beloved book, uh-huh. and again, you know, we all and um, also Dwalin's the first. First dwarf that shows yes, up. He is. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, they're all late. Yeah. The rest of them, I mm-hmm. arrive on time. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, talking about moments, and I've been very lucky, you know, I can think of several moments, especially on screen and on stage, actually, where I've been very aware and I've forced myself in the moment to be aware of the significance of this to me. Yeah. And, um, when I was, you know, I was the first dwarf to shoot uh, on The Hobbit, and it was my day, and you're led to Bag End, uh-huh. and there's the green door, and uh, you stand outside it, and you're in crossing, they, they're sort of fiddling with you, and you're sort of trying to cope with the sheer weight of 70 pounds of costume. I was going to ask about that. that yeah, that's a heavy, heavy costume. It was pretty heavy. Okay, cool. And, I've always wondered that. And I stood there at the door, and... I had to knock on it, of course. And on action, I knocked on the door, and the door to Bag End opened. And it was quite literally like when I walked through that door, I was walking into that world. Wow. The, a world that I was really familiar with, that I knew from my own experience of watching those films and Lord of the Rings. And, and again, I was very aware of that as I stepped over the threshold. It was like a very, it was a metaphorical thing. And yeah, it was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then again, I just had to look like this gruff, <laughs> you know, surly dwarf. Uh-huh. Um, but inside, it was all like, yes! <laughs> I'm in bed um, no, This is like a, a me question. D- the food, was the food actually like, because Dwalin is very much like, he's eating all of, <laughs> all of <laughs> the, Bilbo's all of, food. Yep. Was that real food? Oh, yeah, everything. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> And Ooh. you had to eat this food. Yes, we at uh, <laughs> we were in that place for more than two weeks actually, and it got pretty smelly after a while. And well, a you lot had of how many dwarves are in the company? Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen dwarves, and essentially, the way it was directed, you know, Peter directed a lot of the, the bag end stuff, and Andy Circus, who was the second unit director mm-hmm. on it, he directed a lot of it as well. And when Andy was directing it, because Andy's an actor. He just encouraged us to just go mad. Uh-huh. And so we just had these massive food fights. <laughs> just throwing food at each other, pouring beer on each other's heads. Oh, my gosh. Um, somebody threw an egg at uh, Stephen Hunter, who played Bomber, and he caught it in his mouth. And it's on. It's in the movie. Yeah, I remember that. It's in the movie. That's, wow. Um, so all of that, and I remember I, at one point I was trying to... F- feed Stephen Hunter from behind with a tomato, uh, as you do, right. and, uh, and I was pushing it into his mouth, but uh-huh. it wouldn't go in, and I was thinking, this is weird, why, why won't this go in, and I was actually forcing it up his nostrils, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a testimony to his professionalism that That's he didn't crazy. stop he just... and say, would you stop pushing that tomato up my nose? Oh, thank you. Um, wow, so, we have yeah. a lot of questions already coming in from the audience, so oh, that's wow. awesome. But it was great fun anyway. So this is actually a very, goes right into this question from Mm. Joe Lombardo is, what is an enduring memory from filming The Hobbit? Oh my gosh. There are, Joe, there are so many. Um, I I suppose, you know, big ones, the ones, you know, people often ask me what the favorite scene was. And I would probably have to say the whole barrel sequence because that was just like a big fairground ride. we did a lot of it on the actual river. The really? The Polaris River. Oh, wow. Uh, we were led there, um, assuming, actually, that the stunt people, our stunt doubles, were going to be doing the stuff in the actual white water flowing river. Uh-huh. And uh, we watched a stuntman coming around dressed in a wetsuit and a crash helmet 
demonstrating what was going to happen. And we're like, very impressive, you know. Obviously noticed that he was wearing a crash helmet. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then Peter just said, uh, oh, shall we shoot it? And we were led, like proverbial lambs to the slaughter, <laughs> down to this little jetty where they had all our barrels roped off. We were put in them. The safety rope was taken away and we just floated onto the river and we had to paddle for our lives. And they filmed it. Yep. That was The Hobbit. That's what happened on The Hobbit. <laughs> they just, uh, yeah, 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 several times. They were just several like, times. all right, do this yep. again. Just, okay, just try and, try and make it to the beach. And I remember um, a couple of the guys, John Callan and William Kircher, uh, they uh, breached the safety rope further down the river and had to be chased in a... In, a, in an inflatable dinghy before they actually went into the ocean. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah, Richard, Richard Armitage nearly drowned uh, at one point. He, he missed getting off at the beach and went into this really kind of deep pool of water and just sank like a stone. And well, because you guys to, are in those heavy costumes. <laughs> it's insane. People had to jump in, drag him out. And, oh, yeah, it was great. Wow. Great. So that, that, That's it, that would moment. be memorable, yeah, well, I imagine. Yeah, there's too many. Gosh. Um, so JJ Joe is asking, does Graham enjoy playing different characters on different shows or does he prefer to play one character from beginning to end? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, I suppose technically I have played one character from beginning to end. Um, it's just that my end sometimes is my death. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, well, I, I won't spoil it for anybody. No, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, he, I don't die in The Hobbit. That's true. No. That's true. Only the weak die in The Hobbit. The Dwan weak, was the, never going the to weak die dwarves. in The Hobbit. You know, they might have been the good-looking ones, <laughs> but they died. That's true. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so I do enjoy playing characters all the way through, but I do like um, variety, and I like the challenges that that throws up. Um, so you have someone like The Saint of Killers, who a lot of the time is just silent mm -hmm. and that's a challenge in itself yeah because you have to still be able to convey a character through that silence and i find that really interesting yeah, yeah. absolutely mm. um so kathy in canada watching mm. would like to know a little bit more about the character you're playing in lucifer well i can't so, I mean, whatever you can say i know i, I mean i get i, I get so, i was saying when i arrived you get so many of these NDAs, these yep. non-disclosure agreements, that I can never remember what I'm not allowed to say and what I am allowed to say. I know, well, the showrunner actually tweeted a photograph of me in costume mm -hmm. so uh, and my character. So I can say I'm playing a character called Father Kinley. Yes. And uh, as it sounds, he is a man of the cloth. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, uh, he is a very good man. And that's a that's a that's, that's a pleasant what you can change. Say. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I haven't killed anyone yet. So that's good. I'm not saying it won't happen, <laughs> uh, but you know, as a as a Catholic priest, you know, mm -hmm. he's not going to be the first in line to start murdering people. Probably one not. Hopes, Probably not. So that's pretty much all I can say. Nice that's costume right. though. Good. That's awesome. Very light. You do a lot of different um, dialects in your different characters. Mm. Um, how do you come up with a voice for, for the various roles? That, because, you know, in Outlander, you mm. have to have this very specific, Scottish. but very specific, like, era. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's yeah. Because a period piece as yeah. well. I mean, I, um, I, love, I love accents, actually. I've always been fascinated by that. The, uh, the sound, the how you manufacture a, um, a particular voice. Uh, why people sound the way they do and the regional differences. So I've always been interested in almost on an academic level. And, yeah. and so the opportunity, I've, I've, I'm lucky that I've got a good ear so I can I mean, you hear picked it. up our, our British uh, employee was from Birmingham, like, almost oh, immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, see, that's very, I think, a very distinctive accent. But, um, yeah, I do. I do like that. And, and actually, in Lucifer, I'm quite unusually playing it in my own voice. Really? Yeah, I hardly ever do a part where it's actually how I sound. 
so Father Kinley yeah. sounds like me. I will say that when I heard your voice for the first time, I was like, because I've seen you in so many different roles, yes, that I was just, just like, I didn't know how I you know, were actually going to sound. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I've, <laughs> yes, I've done quite a few different things. Um, so speaking of that, uh, Jamie Dewberry says, Graham's resume includes voice work and live action. Do you prefer one over the other? No, I don't don't prefer um, anything over anything else really uh, all of them uh, all of them are uh, involve the same really which is uh, trying to be true to a character and trying to tell the truth of that character in whatever medium you find yourself in yeah. so even if it's um, even if it's a video game uh, where you're not doing performance capture which mm-hmm. I've done on uncharted and things like that. Yeah. Uh, if it's just straight voice work and the kind of voice work I've done in Castlevania as Dracula, yeah, it, it's great. It's a, they're really enjoyable to do those things. But equally, it's amazing to be in a river in the South Island of New Zealand paddling for your life in a barrel. <laughs> um, that's pretty great, too. Yeah, so, I imagine. Yeah. So it's just very different work. Yes, and it's, I'm very lucky to have done it, yeah. yeah. Um, so... Someone is asking about your parts in video games, mm. and um, mm. do you have your own favorite video game? Oh, gosh. You know, I, it, I feel such a fraud because I don't play video games. I don't either. No, I don't I'm, I'm the guy you'd never want to play a video game with because awesome. I'm so bad. I'm Me the, too! <laughs> yeah, I shoot, I shoot in a circle around my feet. I have no idea what to do. Um, I yeah. run into walls and I can't right, turn back around. And fall down. Yeah, you know, I, I'm dead within about a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should play video games together. Right, It'd be yeah. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it would be over in about five seconds. Um, so I'm, I, I've done video games that I'm particularly proud of. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely put the Uncharted oh. series way up there. I mean, not just as a... Uh, an experience that I had um, which I enjoyed so much working with Amy Hennig and Nolan North and all of those guys we had you know Nolan's become a very very good friend he only mm-hmm. lives just up the road actually. oh wow and I um, I loved that experience mm-hmm. that was like doing a mashup between film and stage oh awesome um, but equally you know I've I've done other things that I've really enjoyed uh, on the video game front but yeah I would say probably Uncharted is my favorite awesome. I was very interested I think those in. should be movies I know but you know they've been trying to make I them know. into films for a long time yeah they, oh, they need the right guy though they do they need the right guy yeah absolutely um, has Graham ever auditioned for a role in Game of Thrones <laughs> No. Uh, what? No. no. They, well, no. I was never um, available. Oh, okay. And, That's a uh, good problem to have. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was either doing The Hobbit, and then I went straight from The Hobbit to do Outlander. Mm. And I was doing Outlander for two and a half years. And it just never coincided. The only thing I can say is that I was doing um, a photo shoot. We, we were doing San Diego Comic Con and Entertainment Weekly do this thing where they have people from all the different casts and they come in and they take these pictures of them and blah 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 and we're all kept in like a holding area <laughs> and given drinks and probably like throw nuts to us or something <laughs> like that Eat. you know that's right <laughs> and when it's your turn they invite you mm-hmm. to do your cast picture so in this case it was preacher for me mm-hmm. and i'm waiting there and the ew guy comes up and goes graham okay they're ready for you they're ready for you i'm like oh Oh, right, okay. So I walk in, and I walk into the room, and, and there's all these people around I don't really recognize. And I'm like, going, oh, hi, hello, hi. And uh, we all start gathering in a group, and I vaguely start recognizing a couple of them. I'm like, my, 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 quite a few beards. <laughs> and uh, standing there in the group at the back, and then I realize I'm at the Game of Thrones shoot. <laughs> and nobody had... Nobody had spotted it. They just saw the beard and they thought, oh, he must be in Game yeah, of Thrones. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of was in Game of Thrones <laughs> for a brief moment. Yeah. Until my fraudulence was found out. And there was that picture anywhere? Can no, people, they, oh. Do you know what? They and don't it's have a liver. It's a, such a regret of mine that I didn't see it through. Because it would be like those kind of wedding photos oh, where yeah. a random guy just turns up. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have loved that. That's amazing. I was too on. I was too British, and all the rest of the cast, who obviously didn't know me from Adam, uh-huh. um, none of because they're all British. They're too yeah. polite uh-huh. to just say, "Who's this guy? <laughs> Why is he here?" And uh, they all just they all were just politely going, mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm, "Hi, mm-hmm. 
How are you? Plus, I guess they film in kind of like different areas. So maybe they were like, oh, well, I guess he's from that company, like that set. No, or- no, no. It was all in the same room. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're all, I was just dragged right, in I was there. I trying to help I them really out, wish. But there's I, really no, no excuse. There's no excuse. <laughs> um, Caprice is asking, does Graham collect anything from his films? Like, do you take a... I steal things, yes. You steal things from film sets. I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I've definitely got quite a few things. I've got my axes from The Hobbit. Uh, That's and exciting. I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, Dougal McKenzie's costume from Ooh. Outlander. Um, I'm still trying to get hold of the weapons. That's a little problematic. Uh, and I've got a lot of uh, things given to me by Wetter. I've got you know, little collectibles and I've got little dolls that have been given to me by other things. So I've got quite a collection of mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. I've got quite a lot of Smaug's lair, his um, coins. Uh, That's so exciting. Essentially, um, and you know, Peter was fine about mm-hmm. this. Jed Brophy, just throwing him right under the bus here, <laughs> uh, said, um, uh, why don't we see if we can get hold of some of the coins while we're shooting in the scenes? And Peter said to him, listen, um, I know you're stealing the coins. Uh, If I don't see you do it, you can keep them. And Jed managed to literally fill his boots on several occasions with coins. And then he divvied them up with me at the end. So I've got got quite a few. Wow. You managed to steal treasure from a dragon. I did. That's crazy. I did. And from Peter Jackson, which is even more impressive, actually. (laughs) That's insane. Um... So it, uh, Jamie Dewberry is also asking, is there a character that you have always dreamed of playing? Oh, gosh. That's really hard. Yeah. Um, I always kind of fall back on um, plays, really, actually. That's, I you mean, know. I would love to hear that. <laughs> uh, I, I've always wanted to play Macbeth. Um, I've been in the play three times, but I've never had the opportunity to play it. So I really still hope that one day... That may happen, and I would love. Uh, talking of Shakespeare, I would love to play Lear one day. Um, again, I've been in King Lear once before, but yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's the. People talk about Hamlet and mm-hmm. things like that, but for me, that's the greatest Shakespearean character to play. Um, I mean, Prospero in The Tempest is pretty good too. Uh, incredible, uh, yeah. but yeah, you know, and also. I always wanted to play John Proctor in The Crucible. Ooh. Um, yeah, I always, and I, I was offered it once and I couldn't do it. And it's just, oh. it's heartbreaking. I would love to do that. Play. Oh my gosh. Um, so it's, I mean, that line, I don't know how well you know the play. Oh, but, I know the play. <laughs> but when they're begging him to write his confession and sign it, mm-hmm. he says, I cannot. It is my name and I shall have no other. And every time I ever see that, play i mean it just reduces me to tears yeah that moment it's so like the honor Uh uh-huh oh Oh, i love that's such a good answer um and then follow up to that uh satima tan would like to know if there is a superhero that you would like to play (laughs) wow (laughs) superhero oh my goodness um well none of the superheroes that i really loved or love Mm -hmm. i could ever play because i'm just too old Um, But, uh, you know, I grew up with Batman and Superman and Spider-Man and all those guys. Mm -hmm. And my favorite was probably growing up was Thor. I loved Thor. (laughs) And uh, I always dreamed, actually. I always imagined having a life-size Thor in my... This was when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. Having one in my house. A gigantic Thor with the hammer, just sort of doing that. Oh my gosh. So I loved Thor. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe Thor, but somebody else is doing that. I, I think somebody else took yeah, that yeah. part. I know. I so oh. close. I that close. Oh. But you did get to play Loki. <laughs> yeah, I've played Loki. Um, I have. I have yes. played Loki, and that was really that was so How enjoyable. How much fun was that? Oh well, yeah. I mean, he's he's just you know Thor's great, uh-huh. but he's just kind of perfect. <laughs> That's true. Mm. Whereas Loki is just so interesting because he's such a flawed um, person Mm -hmm. as Guardian. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it was fun. Um, So 
We're kind of going to scoot into talking a little bit about your directorial debut. Yes. Um, so it's called The Guest of Summer. This Guest this of Summer. This Guest of Summer. This Excuse Guest of Summer, me. which is actually a quote from Macbeth. Really? Yes, Banquo. Oh. Banquo, when they arrive at Macbeth's castle, mm -hmm. points um, this, this temple haunting martlet, this Guest of Summer. Wow. Um, and I should know all the lines because I've played Banquo twice. <laughs> but um, yes, it's. It, I love the title. Yeah, that's a great title. So um, you know, and it's set in the summer, mm -hmm. in a in a village where three unemployed actors go to um, essentially decorate the cottage of their much more successful actor friend, and uh, they end up in the wrong village, and the village that they end up in is mainly populated, well, completely populated by men, uh -huh. uh, apart from one who dresses as a woman called Miss Lady, and <laughs> they dress in sort of quasi-Dickensian outfits, okay. and they are a very, very weird cult. And it's essentially, for anybody who knows these films, it's sort of a meeting of Withnail and I uh -huh. and The Wicker Man. Oh, so it's okay. very funny, very funny, Yeah, but very scary. Um, so it's a real horror, comedy, comedy, wow. horror. It's got elements of sort of 1970s Hammer House of Horror movies, I would say, wow. in it. But equally, some of the comedy is farcical. I mean, mm -hmm. it's proper, like, doors opening, doors closing, people running around just getting into... You know, the actors, the three unemployed actors, end up accidentally murdering uh, several members of the village in the cottage. And uh, <laughs> I am one of the actors... I play a character called Mallory, mm -hmm. uh, who is very, very, very different from anything I've ever played before. Oh. And I will be directing it. So yeah. I will be having that schizophrenic experience and, and doing that for the very first time. But uh, I've had one sit down with Peter Jackson mm -hmm. uh, for tips. Mm -hmm. Which was so nice of him. Yeah. You know, he sat with you know, he had me in. I was there for hours talking about it. And I'm gonna to talk to him again when I go back in September to New Zealand and he's gonna he's gonna give me some more advice. And uh, and that's that you know, I need that. I also need a really good DP. But other than that I feel pretty <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty confident that I know how to direct actors. Mm -hmm. I'll obviously be a dictator rather than a director. Mm. Uh, I'll just be shouting. Oh, okay. At people, mm -hmm. I think well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sort <laughs> doors of, opening and closing. Yeah, yeah. I'm something. just gonna okay. sort of channel the Saint of Killers, Dougal Mackenzie, mm. Dwalin into a sort of singular figure, and then direct through them. Oh, I think that's a good approach. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> It'll be very efficient. Yes, definitely yeah. efficient. We will come in under budget. For sure, Definitely. for sure, because of all the, the smog coin that you have stolen yeah, as we'll well. Yeah, we'll be keeping those, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so who has um, the, this guest of summer, has mm. it been completely cast yet? No, it hasn't been completely cast yet. We've got, uh, we're reaching out to a couple of people for one of the key roles. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get the right person for that, mm -hmm. who's essentially the guy in charge of the village, mm -hmm. a character called Mr. Brewer. All of the people who live in the village basically have nouns for names, oh, okay. really. So the catcher, oh. um, cutter, mm -hmm. wetter, bale. Um, they're just, yeah, extraordinary people. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to find the right person for that character. But we're casting a lot of them from some of my Outlander pals, uh, Duncan Lacroix and Stephen Walters, mm -hmm. who did Outlander with me. Uh, Adam Brown and Dino Gorman, who did The Hobbit with me. They're going to be in it. And we've got, uh, and, and actually shooting in New Zealand, we would uh, get Jed Brophy and Mark Hadlow as well. Oh. Um, so it would be a little kind of Hobbit, Outlander, mashup reunion. And that's um, why you have to mash the characters together to direct them. Cause well, then, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and I they'll it. understand. Uh -huh. uh, and then, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we're, we're, we're putting, putting them all together. But, um, and my friend who wrote it, uh, Paul Kavanagh, is also going to be in it. Ooh. So uh, Dean, Paul, and myself will be playing the actors. Wow. Yes, the unemployed actors. Something that we are all familiar with. So yes. Be able to play. Um, Mr. McTavish, is there another director, living or dead, who you would love to sit with to learn tips from? Oh, my God. Uh, well, the obvious one that comes to mind, because I just recently watched three times on the big screen, 
uh, Dunkirk is uh, Christopher <gasps> Nolan. I mean, I would. Dunkirk. I was lucky enough to go and see a screening, a third screening of the movie at the Aero Cinema in Santa mm-hmm. Monica. Oh. And uh, Chris Nolan came and did a talk afterwards. Wow. And you just, you know, he's such a brilliant mind, you know? So clever. And yes, to sit down with him for an hour would be fascinating. Uh, I do, I'm a, such an admirer of his movies, right from yeah. Memento and all of those oh. things. So, so yeah. anybody who knows Chris Nolan out just, there, you know, just, just give him Not even an hour, hour. maybe yeah. half an hour. Yeah, just... To, Ten minutes. Yeah, just sit down, have a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could walk with him. I don't yeah. need to actually sit down. <laughs> yeah, just, just chase him down the street. <laughs> <laughs> One more question, Chris! Awesome. Um, anyway, yes, it would be him. So you decided for um, for your directorial debut to put it on an Indiegogo campaign? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, the Indiegogo campaign. Um, you can go to uh, we Indiegogo. We have a little short link for people that we can put up on, oh. on the bottom that'll go straight there. It's oh. bit.ly slash Graham's Guess. Wow. Yeah. That's so technologically advanced. I'm just, you know, <laughs> we I'm, did it to I'm, make it simple. So I'm if still they into like give post-it them. notes and <laughs> writing cards and sending them to people. Well, that little short link right there will take you directly to the campaign Fantastic. where you can donate to hopefully bring it above uh, 200% funded. I know. I'm. I, well, I mean, what we're doing, it's a flexible goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, we want to try and get as much into the campaign as possible because it's a, it has a huge leverage value in terms of getting further funding. Um, it's not that we can technically make the film just for what's funded in the Indiegogo campaign, mm-hmm. but because we will have really a great figure to take to, a, to these guys, and they're already really interested in, and impressed by what the fandom has done. I mean, it's been amazing. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't use the word lightly, but I'm humbled by the response yeah. uh, of fans and, and how, how they can harness that sort of fan power. That, uh, that, that can make these things happen. Because that film now has a very, very, very good chance, I would say a 99.9% chance of actually being made. And, and that was not the case even a month or a month and a half ago. That's so so it's, amazing. It's wonderful, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. So you guys, you need to check out this Indiegogo campaign because there are some amazing rewards on there as well. Yes. Yes. yes I, there are some really good, there are some great w- rewards. And, you know, some of them have been taken, not all of them yet. And so there are still ones yeah. available. And uh, some of them are as, yeah, I think, really great uh, that involve tours of yeah. locations in New Zealand for The Hobbit mm-hmm. um, that I will be taking you on. or. Indeed, if it's Outlander that you're super keen on, then that'll be happening in That's Scotland. So cool. I'll be busy. Um, <laughs> and you're, I also doing, saw the cuppa, the, you have a cuppa, like um, an afternoon tea. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm doing an afternoon tea in mm-hmm. uh, Kansas City. At, uh, That's Sasnac, so crazy. And yeah, so I'm, we're, we're, we're trying to get as much as possible. I've, I've picked up some Outlander memorabilia, which I've got signed by the cast. I've got some Hobbit memorabilia that's been signed by the cast and Peter Jackson signed the stuff. And so so everyone's been really, really great. I had to FedEx some stuff to Aidan Turner in London Mm -hmm. to get him to sign uh, some of the Hobbit stuff and all the rest of it. So, and we're doing like, these fake auditions with. I saw those. Right. <laughs> those are fun. <laughs> I, well, you know, yeah. Stephen Hunter did a wonderful one. Sam Hewen did a great one. Katrina Balfe and Duncan Lacroix. I've done one with him that's coming out, I think, tonight or tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. And he's. It's, that's, that's great. And I'm doing an interview with Paul Kavanagh about the movie. I'm doing another one with Richard Rankin from Outlander. So, yeah. So definitely that's something you're going to want to check out. Yes. Head on over to bit.ly slash Graham's Guests. So you can check it all out there. That's where you find everything about this guest of summer. Do it now. Um, And perhaps this could be a good question. This is what someone wrote. Sorry. Um, Does Mr. McTavish have a quote or saying that he likes to say to himself while he's working? Oh, God. (laughs) Only half an hour till lunch. Yeah, I guess. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, I think about food a lot, so that is kind of half true. Uh, so but you are kind of more of a hobbit than a dwarf. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah the dwarves can put it away. That's true. Um, That's true. But yeah, I mean, in terms of, say, I try and, um, it, 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 I suppose that speaks to a kind of motivation when you're working. 
and I try and remain uh, relaxed. I don't, I'm not super method or anything. Mm -hmm. I like to do research because I'm genuinely interested in some of the things that I've been involved in. I mm -hmm. want to know about that world, like Outlander and obviously reading The Hobbit and going back over The Lord of the Rings and all this. It's just a great pleasure. But when I'm on set, I tend to, uh, I joke around a lot. Um, and uh, that, I mean, I'm doing it now. Uh, Lauren German, who plays Chloe and Lucifer, and I uh, have a shared childish sense of humour, which is great, yes. actually. It makes, it makes the day go really well. Yes. And we have a great laugh. And I tend to try and keep it very relaxed and loose right up to the moment when you're actually performing, because I think that way you get a spontaneity that you might not get otherwise. Mm -hmm. So that works for me, but not for everyone. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for being on the show with oh, us. Oh, no, it's, it's been so great. so cool. That's awesome. And um, once that. more, we're going to send you on over to bit.ly. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Graham's Guests. You can check out this guest of summer and um, possibly donate. Get some of these amazing rewards that possibly are there. Possibly donate. Possibly donate. Hand um, in pocket like this, <laughs> yes, you see? Just like this. And then you just donate. Look, Get a, this movie made because we got all want to see it. I've got a $5 bill. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yep. $5 closer. Right all here counts. From the director himself. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. You guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll be back uh, soon. And don't forget to let your geek side show. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of Let Your Geek Side Show. For even more ad-free pop culture news and content, visit GeekSideShow.com. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to let your geek side show.